Tajikistan. This former Soviet nation in Central Asia is a landlocked country. It houses the Pamir region, also called the Roof of the World, a knot of mountain ranges originating and spiraling out in all directions. And now, this little nation of just 9.5 million people is all set to take centre stage as Taliban takes district after district in Afghanistan after the USA's withdrawal. It is from here in Tajikistan where the plan to end the Taliban will be executed. For Russia and India, Tajikistan holds the key to destroying the Taliban and for China, this is bad news. Hi and welcome to TFI Global, the foreign affairs and geopolitical analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I am your host Shubhangi and in this video, I will tell you about the role Tajikistan is going to play soon and Russia and India's plan for it. Tajikistan is poised to emerge as the focal point of an anti-Taliban offensive being mounted by an alliance of India and Russia. Tajikistan is a strategically located country situated in between India and China. The former Soviet state shares a 1,400-kilometer-long border with Afghanistan, 70% of which is now controlled by the Taliban. Tajikistan hosts many military bases of countries like Russia, India and unfortunately even China. So in India, Russia, Tajikistan and other Central Asian states fight against the Taliban, China is all set to suffer massive collateral damage. Taliban now claims that it controls over 85% of Afghan territory. Therefore, the fall of Kabul is not far. Within the next six months, the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, controlled by Taliban, is expected to be revived and then the region would stare at the prospect of dealing with a hostile and rogue terrorist state. On the Taliban's hit list would be Central Asian states and India. As such, India and Russia seem to be working on reviving the Northern Alliance to take on Taliban. Doing nothing and letting the Taliban strengthen itself is simply not an option for either New Delhi or Moscow. For Russia, Tajikistan, which is part of Central Asia, is part of Moscow's exclusive sphere of influence. Furthermore, Tajikistan is a signatory of the Collective Security Treaty Organization, which is the Russian equivalent of NATO. For China, meanwhile, Tajikistan is its future gateway into not just Afghanistan and Iran, but also the Persian Gulf, the Gulf of Oman, and subsequently the global sea links via the Arabian Sea. This allows China to bypass the India-dominated Indian Ocean and the Strait of Malacca, which India can willingly block at any time. The Strait of Malacca is critical to the very existence of China as its energy and oil supplies pass through this narrow choke point. Now, coming to India, Tajikistan is of extreme geostrategic value. China aims at creating a fallback region for its armed forces by occupying Tajikistan's Pamir region, which accounts for 45% of the country's territory. The Pamir region is also known as the roof of the world. By gaining control over this region, China can dominate lowlands, especially Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and Ladakh, part of which is occupied by China. India is looking to reunify these illegally usurped Indian territories with itself. China fears that India may launch an offensive to reclaim its territories and therefore it is preparing to handle a military assault in what it calls Aksai Chain by occupying the Pamir region of Tajikistan. Now that you know how important Tajikistan is to Russia and India, it would be understandable for both these countries to base their anti-Taliban operations out of Tajikistan's territory. Not only will the alliance have an edge over Taliban, but will also derail China's plans at swallowing Tajikistan's Pamir region. Therefore, a military alliance coupled with an offensive against Taliban is coming soon. Tajikistan has asked a Russia-led alliance for assistance in dealing with its new security challenges. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov last week reiterated Russia's allyship with Tajikistan, adding that if there is an attack on Tajikistan, this will of course receive immediate attention from the CSTO. 
Asked if Russia would consider deploying troops to Afghanistan, Lavrov said the answer was obvious. Last week, Russia carried out a training exercise of its forces in Tajikistan in a message to Taliban as well as China. Russian military helicopters based in Tajikistan fired air-to-surface missiles. Russia's defense ministry said on Monday that the two Mi-24 attack helicopters and two military transport helicopters had taken part in a training exercise in Tajikistan during which unguided missiles had been launched at more than 15 ground targets. The exercise had simulated an attack on illegal armed groups along with a convoy of cars, enemy firepoints and arms caches. Evidently, Russia is preparing to launch an offensive against the Taliban. Despite the fact that Taliban representatives flew to Moscow recently and tried to convince Russians that the Taliban would pose no threat to Central Asian states, Russia seems convinced that the rise of the Taliban must be stopped at all costs. It is no secret that China has friendly ties with Taliban and is looking to grow an intimate relation with the terror organization in order to ensure that its own security in the Xinjiang province is not compromised. China aims at keeping Uyghur fighters at bay and fears that Taliban might harbor organizations like the ETIM if Beijing does not support its claims to form the government in Afghanistan. Almost simultaneously, Russia is making several strategic moves. Russia is prepared to activate a military base in Tajikistan against advancing Taliban forces on the CSTO ally's southern border. China also has military bases in Tajikistan. Already, China has usurped 1,158 square kilometers of its territory in 2011, in exchange for Beijing writing off a part of Tajik debt. Yes, Tajikistan has been there, the debt trap. As such, the biggest threat to a successful Russo-India alliance against Taliban is China, and it must be eliminated from this territory. Interestingly, both Russia and India will gladly take down Chinese influence in Tajikistan given the first opportunity. For India, meanwhile, this will not be the first time that it will mount an offensive against the Taliban. For four years between 1996 and 2000, India extended military and medical assistance to Ahmad Shah Massoud, the then military commander of the Northern Alliance, who fought the Taliban with US forces till his assassination in 2001. India provided extensive resistance to the Northern Alliance, uniforms, ordnance, mortars, small armaments, refurbished Kalashnikovs seized in Kashmir, combat and winter clothes, packaged food, medicines and funds. Sensing a renewal of Indian efforts to arrest the growth of Taliban, Pakistan is doing all it can to derail Indian projects in Afghanistan. In the long term, Pakistan hopes to win an ally in the form of Taliban, which will help it fulfill its Kashmir fantasy. As such, Indian projects worth $3 billion in Afghanistan, which New Delhi has built at great risk and by incurring huge costs itself, now stand the prospect of coming under attack by Pakistan and Taliban. In order to protect such assets, India understands it must tame the Taliban by joining an alliance with Russia. The signs are clear. Russia is preparing to take on the Taliban very soon. And India has too much stake in Afghanistan to let go of this situation. Chinese interests will inevitably suffer a huge jolt due to any offensive against the Taliban which Russia launches as part of an alliance with other countries. The understanding in Moscow, New Delhi and other national capitals of the region is unanimous. Taliban must not be allowed to threaten security in the region and steps must be taken immediately to avoid an Islamist terrorist state from being established in Afghanistan.